is uh, here based in, uh, in Corfu, we started in Milan Corfu. In fact, we are in UP Tech for the beginning, since the beginning. Um, and uh, before starting talking about lead generation, I would like to tell you something about myself and about the, the group. So, um, I'm 40 years old. Uh, I started uh, the company at Leak uh, 11 years ago. Uh, we were three co-founders. Uh, three co-founders were engineers, and I think we did a lot of mistakes because we were engineers and we didn't have uh, the, let's say, the commercial drive, the marketing drive from the beginning. Uh, we made a very good decision at the time, which was to, to say, okay, let's create something around digital marketing. Uh, we created, I would say, probably not hundreds, but at least dozens of different projects in these 11 years. Uh, most of those projects failed, uh, but some of those succeeded. And right now we have a few companies within this group, backing group. So talking very uh, quickly about each of these companies for you to understand where, where I come from and why I'm talking about lead generation. So AdClick started with the first project which was not uh, related to generation. The generation it was related with building a marketplace. It was a website for the uh, uh, comparison of prices between uh, products. Uh, we thought this was a very good idea back in 2000. Five. Uh, we started the project in 2006. Uh, after a few months, we realized it was not a really good idea to do it in Portugal because we were targeting Portuguese markets. Uh, and when after uh, and after eight years of development, building a product, building a, a lot of uh, technology, uh, we started talking with clients. So mistake number one: we should have tried talk with the clients eight months before and probably we wouldn't start building the product like we did. When we started talking to Portuguese companies, uh, companies like uh, small retailers, uh, bigger retailers, we realized that uh, at that time the mindset was that the internet was free, so why should I pay for something in the internet, even if that would bring me new customers. People thought that having a website and having an online uh, shop would be enough for them to sell. So they were not uh, with the right mindset at the time to pay for a service to get new customers for their websites. Mm -hmm. So after that, uh, we took the good decision, which was to stop the project. I think if we would uh, continue with this project, eventually after five, six, seven years, we would be in the right moment of the market. Uh, there were companies that did that, for example, Quanto Custa, probably every Portuguese knows this company. They are right now a big company, well, a uh, succeeded company, not a big company, but they have been doing this for uh, 12, 13 years, and right now they have a business, but it took a long time for them to succeed. After we stop uh, this project, which was called Baratix, uh, we started uh, looking at other areas uh, around uh, digital marketing. And one of these areas was obviously lead generation and, generation and generating the sales for other companies. So we started working with some companies that would like to get leads, for example, education leads, who would buy Google AdWords at the time, uh, and generate a lead for someone that was interested in doing a renewable energies, uh, education uh, course. And we had uh, access to a lot of different companies because we worked with brokers, so we didn't, again, have to talk a lot with customers. We talked with our uh, direct customers, which were brokers, uh, affiliation networks and other kind of brokers, agencies and this kind of thing. Uh, at that time, the market was very new. <coughs> we were not the only player in the market, but we were, there were very few players at, at that time. Today there are a lot of companies doing this in Portugal and all over the world. And we started growing the business and the business was succeeding well. And at some point in 2011, I think, 
uh, we went to Brazil, we met some people there, we met some clients there, we understood that there was a need in the market in, the, in Brazil. So we decided to open a branch in Brazil to try to do the same in Brazil that we were doing in Portugal. Uh, eventually this was a mistake also, but well, it was not a mistake because in the end we have a business there and everything uh, is going well there, but we understood that we couldn't be selling in the exact same way and produce in the same way that we did in Portugal and Brazil. So we had to change many things, we had to uh, change our model several times. In the end we found uh, two uh, co-founders and two partners for, for the company there. And this was very good because it made, <coughs> made our product to be more uh, localized and uh, a better product for the Brazilian market. Uh, today, Ulitz is a company, it's a profitable company. Um, is seven years old, seven, six, seven years old, and but we didn't stop in this company, that, as you can see. So uh, we always understood that it was difficult to create big, big companies in the digital marketing area, especially working on services. So we decided that to grow, we should create spin-offs, we should create other companies, we should create a, a separate uh, in the beginning a PNL profit and loss uh, centers, and then in the end we would spin off these companies. And because we developed, because we were engineers and we developed a lot of technologies to support our business, because back in 2007 there were not a lot of tools as that there exist today for doing uh, lead generation, lead uh, management, uh, for uh, email marketing, for many things. There were a few companies doing that, so we decided to invest some of our money that was being generated by Hackley, and to build some technologies. Uh, one of those top technologies with, that we built was a prototype within, within Hackley, and then we spinned off this company, which nowadays is called Ingle uh, It's a company that uh, is a, basically a marketplace where you can buy uh, email marketing. So uh, you don't have a database, but you want to use email marketing channel, you can use other companies' databases, which are usually websites, big websites that own a database or media company that owns a big database, and create a platform that optimizes the way that people buy and sell this sort of marketplace uh, in the end. So we are intermediates in this project. This is a technology project because we try to optimize the way that things are done. So we try to deliver the right message to the right person at the right moment through email. Uh, this company nowadays is uh, more or less 2 million uh, business company uh, working in the major market France, uh, also Belgium, Portugal, Spain, Brazil, Poland and a few other countries. Um, by the way, for this company we went with, a, let's say, a joint venture with, a, with, in fact, it was an investor, but an industrial investor that brought us not only money, but brought us also uh, commercial access in some of the countries we were not so strong addressing the market. Uh, then, because we built many other technologies, and because also some of our, our clients started to ask for our internal technologies to use them, so we decided to create a company called Smartly. And Smartly is a company that fits very well today into, in today's um, agenda because it's a company that can uh, manage uh, all the interaction points between the user and the company from the beginning, since the user comes to your website or even before that, and then until the moment that you sell the product or eventually even after you sell the product for nurturing, for a relation, for engagement with, with the user. Uh, Smart you nowadays know, is, is, uh, is also based here in Portugal, but there is a Smart in Portugal and Smart in Brazil. Our biggest market is Brazil because, uh, as you can imagine, automation and uh, marketing automation is uh, Brazil is a huge market for that because there are a lot of people. So automation makes a lot of sense, and we have a lot of people. It makes more sense we have more people than less people. So this project is being very successful. And we have big, big clients in, in Brazil. Um, because we were in the market for almost 10 years, because everybody in Portugal would knew the brand Hat Click, because we 
what was a we were a company that was in the market for a long time and we had credibility. Uh, we started receiving some uh, requests from our clients and from companies that we didn't know about, uh, asking for services. And we didn't have exactly a consultancy or a service uh, company in, in the group. Uh, because Atli, which was more services right now, is more a publisher. So we, want, we own websites in several countries and we export these websites. But we don't we don't provide exactly a service consultancy. Okay? And so because we have the knowledge in the digital marketing and because we have the demand from the clients, and in this, at this time we decided to go after the clients, so the client asked us for something and we went after this opportunity. So one year now, for eventually two years ago, we created Impact in Digital, which is our consult consultancy arm. So we create projects of digital transformation, uh, which today means everything, but we are experts in the part in the, in the generation uh, of leads and nurturing clients and the relation with, with our clients. So we, we, we do transformation projects for companies that are <coughs> or starting some new digital projects or they want to improve what they are doing in the digital area. And finally, we have another company, uh, which nowadays is not a company, it's a, a PNL uh, center, which is Push News. It's a software as a service company, and it was created because, again, we created the technology for ourselves inside that link. Uh, I think you all know those push notifications that uh, come from in the browser where you go to the website, they ask you for permission to send you some news or whatever. And if you accept, then you will receive this kind of information. Push news is, is a technology that does that, does more than that, and allows you to create, for instance, communications one to one with the users instead of sending a blast. Uh, this is like email, but uh, it can be then also one to one. Uh, the company is recent, so it's uh, one year, more or less one year. We have a uh, few hundreds of clients in Brazil. It's our biggest market. We are doing this from Portugal. Uh, our clients are acquired mostly online, but then we have uh, you know, work inside sales, uh, trying to also to, to get bigger customers. Um, we have also uh, created a freemium uh, model and we have uh, eventually 1,000 clients in, in this model, which is not totally paid, it's partially free. So, um, the agenda for today. Uh, first, uh, we will discuss obviously what are leads, because I think many times we talk about leads and we don't know what they are. We know that sometimes people talk about leads and one people is talking about one thing and the other person is talking about other thing. So uh, I want to to, to, to start to say what are leads and where they fit in the, in the, in the funnel. Uh, then, um, I, I, I need to make a point before coming to lead generation, which is related with something that was already talked in the first day, which is know your clients first, but always disconnected with lead generation and how this can be done in this, in this context. Then we'll talk about lead generation itself. Uh, some tips, some ideas, some uh, the big context, the big picture. Uh, I will give you some statistics which are interesting and then just uh, wrap up uh, with a final message. So first of all, <coughs> the leads. Leads, what are leads? Leads, it's um, when somebody uh, demonstrates some kind of interest, could be very strong or not too strong, but demonstrates some interest in our product or our service. And then in the end, what we want to do is to try to move this lead from the beginning, where it might be just exploring and so trying to learn something, around a funeral until you can get a sale from that lead. So the idea is the lead is the beginning of the pipeline. So you can see your funnel there hundreds of different ways to represent a funnel. This is one of these ways. So in, in the beginning we have strangers, people we don't know, people that are browsing in the web or eventually not in the web. Uh, and you try to uh, convert these strangers in. Uh, first, in the first place you must attract these strangers. Okay? After you attract these strangers, 
and you bring them to your uh, website or to your landing page or whatever uh, place you want to, to take them. Uh, this is the part of traffic generation to bring the lead, to bring the, the strange people into a context where you can somehow you control. Uh, then you have the, the lead generation process itself, which is to try to get information from these leads to be able to communicate with them later on. Okay, so then after that you go down the funnel, and there are different kind of leads in different and different moments. Uh, and I want you to just remember these three concepts, which are the tofu, the top of the funeral, the mouthful, the middle of the funeral, and the bottom of the funeral, uh, where the people are in different moments of decisions. In the beginning, they are just exploring and probably they don't want to buy anything, they are just researching. Then they might be somehow interested in, in the product, but not your product eventually. And at some point, they will show interest in your product. And that's the moment where you should move. Uh, in some of these moments, you should move the leads from the marketing perspective <coughs> to the sales perspective. <coughs> so, so the sales team. In the end, what we want is to convert them into customers. So the leads usually, uh, the, lead, the marketing leads usually stand in the top of the funeral to the middle of the funeral. That's the place where we act. So when you talk about the bottom of the funeral, it's, it's more related with sales. Uh, from the marketing perspective, uh, the lead is anyone that might match the defined criteria to be a buyer and you can get something from, from these leads to be able to continue the communication with the lead. From the sales perspective, uh, the sales ready lead is someone that is already engaged with the company and is starting to get to the point where you should think about uh, giving him, uh, putting him in the process of the set of sale. Uh, and finally, the prospect is whenever you have already qualified, you know that the guy is interested, and at that moment, the, this person, this, this lead, is already uh, demonstrated the intent to purchase. So it's the moment where you will propose in a negotiation, a proposal, and try to close the, the deal. So usually there is a conflict, and this conflict is bigger when companies are also bigger, uh, which is a conflict between the marketing and the sales. And uh, the marketing guys say, we are generating a lot of leads, why don't you contact them? And on the other hand, the sales guys say, okay, the quality is not good enough. That's why we don't call them. The, it, doesn't, it is not worth the effort to do it. So what needs to be done to make sure that this works? First of all, is try to define what, what is the qualified lead for the sales uh, team to be sure that the marketing team will work to qualify this lead until that stage. Because otherwise, uh, the marketing guy thinks he's doing a perfect job, he's generating a terrific uh, number of leads, and in the end, the sales guy will never close any of, of these deals because there is no match between the criteria that each one has in, in, in their mind. Uh, so, how to do this? Well, one criteria, obviously. Uh, there is a techniques a lot around lead scoring, I think this is going to be discussed in detail later today. Uh, and then define where is the threshold where the lead is already in the position to be passed to the sales team and the sales team will get his lead and try to close the deal or try to move him forward uh, in the flow, in the funnel. Well, next point, uh, knowing, knowing your <laughs> client. Uh, I did this mistake, as I told you in the beginning, I told you like two times, three times, I did it ten times, maybe more than that. Sometimes we, we think that we know our client, but in the end, sometimes we really don't know the client. And it, it is very, uh, I would say, it's hard to do, to really know your client. Uh, <coughs> I think it takes some time, it takes a lot of effort, but everybody needs to be in the company, in the organization, uh, focus in this task because it's a, a very important task that drives, I think, everything in the company. So the bad news is that, as you know, clients are not always the same. They are very different. You have uh, uh, 
different industries which have different clients, uh, even in each industry there are different uh, people inside the organization, different roles that buy your product and it depends a lot of the size of the organization, uh, eventually the culture. In some cultures the boss will also will always be the last guy to say uh, I will buy in other, in other cultures, in other organizations, the decision can be done with uh, people that are not in the top level. So this depends a lot and you need to learn all of this to be sure that you know your clients and you know who is going to buy from you. Uh, obviously then, depending on what you are selling, if it is a software as a service, if it is a service, if it is a marketplace, it depends a lot and it changes everything. So we need to, to know very well what you are selling and who is going to buy from you. So the solution is different for every company and there is no silver bullet, at least that I know. Uh, one way to address this, <coughs> one way to address this is to uh, create what's called uh, buyer personas. Uh, anyone here already did this kind of thing? Good. Okay. Uh, so buyer personas is, is um, it's like creating uh, a character for a movie. When you think about creating, uh, you're building a movie and you think about uh, the, the main actor, uh, you kind of think and you are going to put yourself somehow thinking on how would that person react to something that will happen during the movie. This is something in the same way, so you need to understand first what do you want uh, from your current customers to be your, the perfect fit for your product and then uh, the idea here with buyer personas is to create uh, a not totally real but not totally fake uh, person which is an archetype and uh, then uh, because you can learn from your clients by first talking to them, which is the most important. Secondly, by uh, looking at data and trying to realize and try to understand what kind of people is really your clients and which are the most, <coughs> most valuable clients and what, what kind of clients do you want also. And then by studying all this information, and this is something that can take a long time, and you need to have a base of clients or at least prospects uh, to talk to them directly. Uh, to try to build this buyer persona. Uh, and by doing this in the end, and also trying to understand what are his goals, and this is really important, the idea is, is to be very empathic. You need to put yourself in the position of uh, your potential client to try to understand what are his motivations, what are his goals. Uh, for example, if he works in a company, a big company, what will be uh, the KPIs that this guy has in the company. This is really important. Sometimes people uh, spend money or not spend money because they have a KPI related with whatever inside the company. And you need to try to understand what is really in his mind, what's really important for him, to try to then give the right answers to, to his problem and try to help him. Uh, so, for, this is an example on, on the right, which is a buyer persona called uh, the owner holy. Uh, there are a lot of rules that you can, and if you go on the internet, you will find eventually a lot of uh, blogs and a lot of information about this. You can also find templates to create and uh, wizards to create uh, buying personas. Uh, but in the end, you will come up with something like this. So this is from HubSpot. Um, this guy is one of their buying personas, uh, which in this case is the business owner. So this guy rules the company. It's a small company. Uh, he's an industry expert, but no specifically in the marketing industry. I'm talking about marketing because uh, HubSpot, the company, sells a marketing product. Uh, so we create here the, 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 the character saying that he's 44, that he's married, uh, he's two or three kids, whatever. Uh, and then what are his goals, what are his challenges, and why he loves, in this case, a spot. What he values in the product and why is, is he buying your product. Okay. 
by the way, there is a second, uh, for Hotspot, there is a second uh, buying persona, which is the Mark and Mary. And uh, why did they create two personas? Because they have two very different types of clients. In this case, uh, we are looking at mid-sized to big companies, so people, uh, companies that have more than 25 people, where there is a director of marketing or a VP of marketing. Uh, the person that is uh, our target client is the manager team, a small uh, team of marketers. It can be a bigger team, but eventually a small team, one to five people. Um, she's again uh, 42 or above 40. She's married. She has two kids. And she has very different goals, very different challenges. And she loves the spot for very different reasons. Okay, what, what can this buyer persona do for you and why this is a way to, to try to address the problem of knowing your clients? Uh, whenever you do this job and try to create this buyer persona, in the end, you come up with a very clear picture. You, you have a picture of the person itself, so it creates an image, which is important. You create a name for it. Uh, everybody will uh, know these names in the company because you're not going to create a hundred names. Uh, hopefully. Uh, I'm going to talk about that later on. Uh, and then in the end, everybody will know or will think that knows there is an entity, a person that you created, a character, and you will, uh, people will in the organization look at the same person that represents your client, your dream client, or at least client you can have. This is really important. So you create a clear picture across all organization which make is, makes it easier to manage all interactions and, all, and to be consistent with all interactions you do with this client, with this person. Uh, you move away from the one-size-fits-all, which is always a problem, because when you have a product, sometimes you think, okay, I can sell this to everyone. And then in the end, you are going to buy ads targeted to everyone, you're going to create landing pages based to everyone, and then in the end, if it is for everyone, it will not fit for the specific case. So you should focus and you should get a clear, uh, specific profile. Um, and then in the end, you are personalizing and creating the character around this, this person. So, uh, again, I'm going to talk about consistency because I think this is, well, this is key for marketing, but this is especially the key for uh, success doing lead generation. So you must use the right language. The language must be adapted if you are talking to the owner of a small company. It must be adapted if you are talking to the VP of uh, marketing of a big company. It must change the way you talk to these people, you to address these people. It's also important because you are going to uh, try to appear in events or you try to appear in websites that uh, one of the buyer personas is going to visit and the other one is not, so it's a different communication. So in, in this way, you start to create, in this case, two different lines of communication, two different lines of lead generation. Um, so you can uh, use the right language, go where your audience is. You, if you find that the guy from, uh, the, that is the, the owner of the, the company will look eventually for problems related with paying taxes, so eventually you should try to find which websites, which blog address this kind of problems and try to appear in these websites. If you are targeting the marketing uh, uh, person, the VP of marketing of a big company, maybe you will go to uh, websites that talk about the strategic marketing, for instance, and try to appear there. Uh, in the end, uh, there are a lot, I think you, yesterday you had a talk about uh, generating content, which is also a key for lead generation. <coughs> and if you are creating content, imagine for these two kind of profiles, to this kind of buyer persons, uh, you will create different content to try to attract them. You can create the same content for, for these two very different kind of, of people. Uh, and of course, communicate using the right tools. Eventually, you will not use phone at some time for one kind of a person, but you might use the phone easier for the other one. So in the end, what we want, we want to do is to produce better quality leads aligned with organization expectations, but 
uh, having in mind what is our client, what will be exactly our targeting. The problem comes when uh, you start to look at these buyer personas and then in the end you come up with three, four, five, six, seven, ten different buyer personas. And I think this is uh, something that it can happen in the beginning, but you should from the beginning start to cut buyer personas and not very late in the process. Uh, because what will happen is that you will have to make effort for each of these buyer personas to create different flows, different activities, different marketing activities, different ways to generate leads for each of, of, of the, the buyer personas you create. So if you have a lot of them, or you have a huge team to do this, and even though it's going to create other problems, we'll talk later, but you should try to cut and uh, pick one, pick two maximum, uh, depending a little bit of your uh, organization, on the size of your team, and uh, what stage you are. For the HubSpot, which I think is an interesting case, HubSpot is a company, who knows HubSpot? Who doesn't know HubSpot? Maybe it's easy, okay. So HubSpot is a, is a, a tool that um, is related with uh, inbound marketing. It was much more related with inbound marketing a few years ago. We were market leaders. Then they moved to a wider solution of uh, uh, tools related with the engagement, <coughs> relation with the user, and many other features. Nowadays they also have a CRM, which is a, a, a subject. But they started by uh, the inbound marketing, so the creating content, producing good content, tools for producing content and generating leads. But then they started to build other parts of the product which were more related with engaging with the customer. So, for this first, this uh, buyer persona, uh, the product uh, in the beginning was very good because uh, it was easy, it was very easy, it was just addressing one, one part of the problem, it was easy to use and easy to understand, that you could create content and bring people interested and convert them into leads, okay? But then, of course, it came the other part, which was more down the funeral, uh, related with the relation. And they put a lot of effort in their product for the first part and not so much for the second part. However, they realized that this kind of profile was interesting for the, the uh, for, for the, this profile was interested on the part that they didn't invest so much in the problem. So it comes a problem where you have two profiles and then in the end you say okay I'm gonna put money in the, in the product where in the first part of the product or the second part of the product. Satisfy this guy or that guy. And in the end you try to satisfy both, which is the usual thing we try to do because we see opportunity here and here. But then if you think of an organization that is growing, as the spot was at that stage, it was difficult for them to manage international expansion, at the same time having two wire personas, making two different uh, marketing activities, and managing a different product, or not a different product, but trying to get a product that will solve both problems. So after a few years, they decided to just go for these wire personas. Which doesn't mean they don't sell for that guy also, but they target this one. They all, the effort is done to get these kind of guys. Uh, so this was basically... Uh, so they also make this decision because of this. They realize that the retention, which is a very important uh, figure in uh, software as service business, uh, they realize it was bigger for the kind of clients, uh, this kind of clients. <coughs> so uh, they went from Martin Mary and they just got the other buyer person. In the end, what they got? Well, the math got better. The organization got faster and they were focused. And the results were something like this. And uh, their, uh, the increase that they had in the business after they made it change, not, of course it was not only based on this change, they also did an international expansion and put money on this, but the customer retention increased, uh, the revenue retention increased a lot, 
the cost acquisition increased because they were targeting higher clients, but it was not so much. These are numbers from the spot. Okay, uh, they, they 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 produced the case about this. Uh, the lifetime value was the most interesting number, which increased a lot because the the marketing Mary uh, buyer persona uh, spent a lot more money in this because it was a bigger organization. They could spend more money. So in the end, the lifetime value of the client increased more than the double. And the number of people they put doing the business, the sales part of the business, was multiplied by 10. <coughs> so the business increased a lot, and they are now, I don't know, but they are a very big company. Not sure if they already started the IPO process, but they should. Um, so, um, I brought here, uh, there are a lot of studies about uh, effective te tactics for B2B. This is not only lead generation, but you can find uh, very different ones. But what I, I, I will want to highlight here is that uh, almost all of them, uh, and of course this depends on your company, what kind of company are you working with, but in, but uh, events, and trade shows and conferences are probably the best way, uh, the most effective way to get customers. So the offline is still very important here. Um, however, the offline uh, also implies that you make a lot of investment uh, of your time, of your efforts, and you cannot optimize this kind of process. But it's still really important. And then. There is the company websites, the SEO, the email marketing, webinars, telemarketing, etc, 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 etc. And many of these are uh, connected somehow. You can talk about SEO if you don't talk about the company website or the blog, because it doesn't make sense to talk about uh, SEO without having the place where you're going to apply the SEO. So uh, I think this is interesting for us to see that there are a lot of different ways to get business. This doesn't mean eventually only leads, because when you are going to uh, an event, you can go directly to a phase where you are going to sell directly. So it's not even a lead; it's it's directly a start to going to, to sell. But it can generate leads, and it generates leads. Um, so but there are a huge number of of, uh, of effective, some more effective, some are less effective ways to, to generate uh, traffic. So again, and now moving to the lead generation topic, which I don't have much time left. So in concept, uh, you have uh, a stage of awareness where people are not interested in a product. They are just uh, looking for something about a problem they might have, but they don't know if they want to buy anything, they are just exploring. Uh, then they start uh, uh, considering the consideration stage where they start to think about solutions for their problem, not exactly your solution. They are looking for uh, if they should buy a CRM or if they should buy a lead management model. <coughs> they don't know still. Uh, they are trying to, to make this decision. And then after they uh, pass this consideration stage, they come to the decision state, stage where they uh, really know what they want. They, they know that they probably will buy, it, and then at that moment they will choose between one, two, three, four, five solutions, and then decide for one of those, or eventually none of those. But usually they will decide for some. So and the lead generation will come from here to here, okay? And the top of the funeral, middle of the funeral, bottom of the funeral, and then you have the retention stage is going to be talked in the next in the next, uh, uh, with my next uh, colleague that will talk about this, I guess. <laughs> um, well, um, I think I'll talk about this later. So, uh, the idea around lead generation is to stimulate and capture the interest of uh, someone in the product or service that develop your uh, sales pipeline. So, the idea is to get some people that might be interested and probably are interested and put them in the beginning of a pipeline and then work in this pipeline to try to close some of these deals. Uh, it's a fact that 
nowadays the buyer, I mean, if we're talking about technology, if we're talking about uh, software as a service, uh, the buyer researches a lot, a lot, a lot. Many times it spends a long time trying to research and he knows a lot about what he's going to buy. So it's uh, important to qualify leads because you can get a lot of people that might be interested but not so interested in your product and then in the end you don't want to pass all these leads to the sales team to put effort on them, you must qualify and to qualify is to make them move in the flow and try to ask questions, try to figure out if they are really interested in your product. Um, finding customers, it's important but being fun is even more important. What this means is that uh, because people are going to search for it, 20 years ago it was not like that. So you will knock the door and say I have a solution for you and try to see if there is a fit. Nowadays the guy knows that he has a problem, he's going to search and if you are not found in the middle of his search, eventually you lose this client and you will go to, to your competitors. So you don't want to do that. Uh, being fun is very important here. Uh, the advertising nowadays is based on behavior much more than based on uh, social uh, demographics criteria. So this is also a change that happened. Uh, and because there is too much information, this means that people have, have less attention for your product. So you want to put the efforts in the right moment with the right message, which is difficult but important in this process. So, how to generate leads? And uh, I'm gonna, I, I could be talking here for more two hours, about two months. <laughs> eventually, years, years, because there is a lot of, of, of information and a lot of strategies. But trying to think about, okay, first moment, I need to generate leads. I need to get an email, I need to get a, a mobile phone, I need to know the person, I need to know. What is it, what 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 is looking for? So the best way to do with this, at least from what I understand, uh, it's uh, to create an offer. And when you create an offer, and you can be talking about uh, content, trial, product demo, personal consultation. When I talk about content, I'm talking about uh, eventually what we talked yesterday. There are videos, uh, articles, webinars, a lot of content you can create and then you must not be afraid to encourage the lead, to encourage the, the person that's looking at that to uh, generate the lead. To, you must ask him for doing something for you, which usually it is to give me your information and now I will give this. This is the exchange. I give you something that you think it might have some value for you, hopefully it has. Uh, and you are going to give me something which is your information, which will allow me <coughs> in the future to continue uh, going after you and, and, and trying to move you in, in the funnel. So, uh, ask for it. Call to action is important, always. It must be uh, well, uh, well created. And focus. And that's why many pages are good for this. And uh, I'm putting this because you can uh, try to generate uh, traffic and people for your website or even create a specific page inside your website. This can be done and in some cases it's better. And uh, there are no hard rules here, you must test, 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 test. But usually when you put someone in a place where he has not a lot of options, if, if the person goes to a page and just has one button and nothing else, the only thing he can do is to click that button. If you send this person to a, a place where you have this button, but then in the top you have a lot of options to navigate in whatever, it will probably navigate in this and will forget and you are focusing on lead generation and you will, you will lose the client because you will go after other information and go after the pricing and you are is not in a position to discuss pricing first. You need to understand if the client wants your product or not. So the trying to create focus for the user, it's very important. And that's why landing pages are, um, are other kind of strategies like landing pages uh, are good for lead generation. It's also important landing pages why? Because by creating landing pages you can be more agile. 
if you uh, could change your website because we are generating leads in the website, then in the end you come up with a developer needing to change something and you don't want that. You probably want to isolate this and get the marketing team to be able to change everything they need without any intervention of IT. Uh, that's why also isolating landing pages is better and because it can also be more flexible. You can test whatever you want. Uh, if you need to tell a lie to test something, you can tell a lie in your landing page. You shouldn't tell any lie in your web. Well, you shouldn't tell any lie anyway. But if you want to test, <laughs> test in the landing page. Don't test in the, in your website because it's it's something that everybody will will be looking at. It's usually important, and again, this is not a rule for everybody, but it's important in many cases to create trust. And you create trust if you put sometimes something saying uh, Norton antivirus blah blah blah. You create trust and you put the customer testimonial next to what you are uh, asking the user to do. It's uh, to create trust. You can put some logo types of your clients to, that are relevant. Um, and this is also related a little bit with what we talked uh, two days ago about the innovation uh, moments. Uh, the diffusion, where if you are going after the, the first guys, they are more willing to take risk and maybe they don't care if a big company is using that or not. But if you are talking about the guys that are uh, not uh, the early adopters but are the laggers, probably they want to know that uh, Microsoft is using your product, so it's not an issue for them, there's no risk in using it. Well, Microsoft might not be the best <laughs> case. Uh, you should eventually consider using video to show uh, something more uh, appealing, more interesting for the user and to pass the idea if, if this is related with the product or eventually related with the solution or the case or the problem you are trying to address. And finally, if possible, create urgency. Create a limited offer, create a time-based offer, create something that mm, makes the trigger for the person to do it now and don't leave it for later. Oh, I'll do this tomorrow. No, you need to do it now. So, from the top channels that I, I decided to explore a little bit here uh, online, again, because there are offline strategies that work. Uh, I choose email marketing, content marketing, search marketing, and social media. Again, there is no rule for this because for some companies you might say, well, social media for me is not working and it will never work because the kind of clients I'm targeting will not listen to me on social media. Everybody is on social media anyway, but uh, it not, might not be the right way to address uh, such marketing. It depends a lot on, on your industry. I'm thinking about the software as a service scenario or more or less this, this kind of scenario where you have a product that is not the big elephant. Uh, eventually is not the small mouse, it's somewhere in the middle. <coughs> so, for email marketing, I know this is a big uh, question everybody has. How can I do email marketing if I don't own... Uh, how can I generate leads in email marketing if I don't own leads? So how can I get the email? <coughs> so, there are a lot of ways to do this. Uh, in first place there are third-party lists where you can try to uh, use uh, databases that uh, have your kind of clients and I give you an example. Uh, the first moment that we launched uh, uh, email bidding, uh, we went to an event to launch it, it was in Spain, in uh, Home Expo, which is <coughs> our online marketing exposition. And these guys, because they were running this event for 10 years or something like that. They had a huge database that had a very good segmentation and I could target only the kind of clients that I wanted. And it was a, <laughs> it was a success and I had a huge uh, ROI. I invested a lot in the beginning. I thought mm, maybe this will not work because it's too expensive. But in the end it was really worth. But of, of course it was worth because the clients that I got were not uh, $10 clients. It was. Uh, two, three, five K clients, per, some per month. So uh, it worked for me, it might not work for everybody, but I think this is something that it's not very well explored. We 
because usually ticket price to do it is expensive and people don't do it. But this, uh, for me at least, that, that worked. Then, uh, try to get partners, meaning you have a company that sells uh, a share and you have a company that sells a table. Why not try to get a partnership between these two companies and one of the company will promote your product and, and you do the same the other way around. Uh, this is something that I already tested, already did with software as a service and it obviously works. Uh, and it's also, if it is well done, uh, it comes as a recommendation, it comes with a special offer from being partner of the other company, so it can work very well. And finally, you can go after uh, websites and blogs that uh, own databases from people that are interested in this subject, and you can try to address them if they are the right target for you. You can also do car registration and co-sponsoring. What is this? So, uh, whenever someone uh, registers in your service, and if this service is people that are marketing people, uh, marketing managers, let's say, okay, they use this kind of product. You can try to get uh, an agreement with this company if you are not selling uh, a product that, that is a direct competition for them. And then, after the user buys their product, or after the user registers in their product, in their uh, trial, for example, you can ask him if he's willing to share his information with this company, which is our partner, and try to create here something that m must make sense for the user and he must be able to say I want or not. But this is a way to generate leads for you. And then the co-sponsor, which could be more or less in the same situation or in the situation where you create a, a relevant content, you, you create a, a market study and then in the end you uh, put your brand together with this study you are a sponsor of this study, you are a co-sponsor of this study, and then you get the leads that come from the people that is going to download this white paper or this, this market research. This is another way to do it. Uh, and then the email marketing can be done immediately after the people, uh, for example, re register in your uh, newsletter uh, or in your website. You can trigger messages directly, not talking about the nurturing part more than the flow. In the beginning, you can start with a very low commitment uh, offer, which is the newsletter, mm. and then try to address and uh, increase your database with this kind of uh, situations in your website. Mm. So generate leads from your website. You already have people going there. Just ask them to subscribe something, and then you will be able to communicate with them. Um, by the way, for email marketing, there is another thing that uh, you can do, and uh, it's becoming more and more uh, uh, relevant, which is to try to uh, get tools that, uh, based on uh, going after uh, scrapping LinkedIn uh, profiles or other network profiles, that can get you people that are from your market, uh, that are your buyer personas, and that you can uh, use this kind of information to start target them. Of course, you can't assume that they opt in because they didn't, but you can assume, and it's legal to do it, to send an email to these guys saying, look, uh, I know that uh, you are a marketing manager, blah, blah, blah. I, will, I have this kind of solution, I would like to get in touch with you. This is a way to do email marketing, not like marketing in a broad sense, one-to-one, -one, or you can use uh, mechanisms to do, to do this uh, automatically, but like if you are talking one-to-one. -one. And by, by doing this, you can go just to the right profile, the exact profile, and not the mass marketing, which will be, in this case, spam. Um, did you understand what I said? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So there are some solutions right now that can create this kind of, of information. You can get emails from people uh, that might be your target, and then create a way to communicate with them one to one. So, for content marketing, uh, I guess this was already spoken before, but this is a way to get 
obviously leads. So you create in your website or your, in your blog, you can create the newsletter sign up. It's the first way to start. It's the easiest way to start, just to send to the user some information on your newsletter. It's not eventually not the best way to do it because it's not going to be targeted. It must be interesting for the user. In some cases, it might work. Then you can try to get guest, guest posts or reviews in, in other uh, websites and try to get from these the visits and then convert them in leads. Okay. Then you can publish case studies, industry research, videos, white papers, uh, template papers, infographics, uh, and other kind of tools or uh, live or archive webinars where you ask the user to give information to be able to see this content. Okay? It's, gate, it's called gated content, where you, you must provide something and only after providing this you will get access to, to, to this content. Uh, and then you can create, in some cases, uh, micro-sites where you address uh, only one subject related with what your user wants to do. It's like a micro-blog, which we're going to just talk about one, two, three, topics about one very specific thing and with this you are targeting a very small niche but could be interesting to the generation because you are showing a website made just for this subject. Increase, it will increase the, the conversion rate. Thanks for smarting. Uh, I think this was a subject for other days. I think this is really important. Uh, for instance, in, in Push News, one of these projects we rely a lot on, on, uh, on uh, AdWords to do this. Um, I think it's almost impossible to do anything for lead generation without using somehow uh, Google. Uh, even if it is too expensive, if you go to a very targeted uh, market, you can get a reasonable cost for lead generation in, in this. In this uh, and, and you get you get uh, people that are looking for <coughs> your product or looking for the kind of information you are providing so it, you are sure that they already have some interest which raises the, the quality from the beginning. Then on social media. We have obviously LinkedIn and LinkedIn, as I said, you can uh, <coughs> try to do not only the connection and try to get introduced. This is somehow a lead. But uh, there are tools to try to get you the emails for this, uh, scrapping tools. Again, don't do this by mass, because if you massify this, it's, it's, it's a grey area, at least. Uh, this is not so bad, you are probably thinking about, oh, about the GDPR, blah, blah, blah. Uh, there is not a direct impact on this, because here we are talking about information that is uh, not personal, but it is related with your its professional information. That's why uh, you can do some of these techniques with not so much problems as you could do for consumers. You can you can scrap information from consumers and then send emails to them. Even if it is one email, you can get into a big job. Facebook. Uh, many people say, oh, Facebook doesn't make sense because, because, because well, it makes sense. For instance, for products like push notification products, which is something that any blogger can use, uh, we are doing advertising in Facebook, we are promoting content in Facebook, and we are getting leads and the leads generate sales. So it works. Uh, it might not work for every business, I know it, but at least for us it works. Uh, Twitter, I will put this in a, in a position where it also depends a lot on geography because as we know Twitter it's very different used, used in uh, different uh, countries. I think it al already changed a little bit the way that Twitter is being used in the beginning. Twitter was much a uh, thing for early adopters. It was a very techy thing and people that were there were very tech. You know that Trump is there so I don't think it's very <laughs> early adopters. But uh, Twitter can work uh, in, in also in, in advertising to, to generate some leads for for you. But it depends on your product and depends on your on geographies you are you are targeting. And finally, Pinterest and then Pinterest, Pinterest, yeah, Pinterest. Uh, 
Uh, I think one of the things that uh, can work well on Pinterest uh, are the infographics. Uh, at least, and now I'm going to talk about my personal experience, uh, you can create uh, infographics that will impact users uh, because Pinterest in some profiles comes with a lot of uh, business uh, related information and you are doing one way branding on the other way you are bringing the user to your website because he's going to see who are these guys why what kind of solution they have so this can generate with not a lot of effort and if you are lucky you can get some uh, exposure to, to potential clients um, Sorry for yes. interrupting you. I uh, would just like to remember your timing. I know. Like I already look at that. I'm just, I'm, I'm going to slur it. So, low hanging fruit. I think this is, at least, uh, I think this is the most important because so far we talked about things very broadly and very uh, high level, let's say. But low hanging fruit. I think one of the things that works very well, and you can see that in a lot of products, is the power buy. So use your own product if it's going to be exposed to potential clients. For example, push notifications product that all a lot, push news. We always have the power buy whenever it appears. Do you want to receive blah blah, yes or no? Power buy push news. What this means is that if you go and you get a client, which is a big client, you're going to get a lot of exposure, you get a lot of visits. We have thousands of visits per day, a lot of thousands of visits per day, because we are in a website, a huge website in Brazil, uh, from Grupo Abril, uh, one of the biggest. And we get a lot of leads. Most of those leads are not worth, but from those we try to qualify them and then make sales from this. This is an easy way to do it. Uh, then you have the paid search with low budget and very focused. Uh, I'm talking about low aim fruit, okay? That's why I'm talking about very focused and low budget. This means that you are going to target exactly the keywords that you know. If this guy is going to search for this, it's really because he's a client, a very possible client for me, so I'm going to buy these, these keywords that sometimes are keywords like that. Uh, the expressions with a lot of, of the words. Uh, try to target also the long tail SEO because as we know, SEO is something that takes time to work, usually. But if you think in a strategy, again, where you're going to target long tail, and when I say long tail, it's just to try to optimize for a very niche, very particular situation. Your product can address all industries, but if you get a page where you talk about only one single uh, industry in a very specific theme, you're going to get leads and you're going to get well-positioned SEO because competition is less for this particular subject. And then in the end, you can get good leads from that. It's, I would say, low-hanging low fruit also. So, paid Facebook, again, depends on your market. It can work and it's easy to set up something like this. Uh, use your LinkedIn profiles to promote better Sometimes you forget about this and uh, we don't update our profiles in a way that when people see our profiles, see our employee, employee profiles, would come to us in our, in our website and, and can get tangled from that. Uh, using things like Quora, for example, it's very good because you can put yourself in, in front of your competition whenever you are talking about, let's say, HubSpot. If I say I have a competition solution for HubSpot in, uh, in the comment section, uh, someone will go to your website and explore you. Uh, another one that I think is really relevant is retargeting. Whenever someone goes to your website, there is an interest. Almost uh, sure that there is some kind of interest when he goes to the website. It's a mistake not to retarget this guy because there is a big chance that if you retarget him, you will get a potential lead. So uh, I think this is low hanging fruit and not, not very expensive. Uh, of course, guest posts takes some time to build the content, but you have to build content anyway. Uh, and usually you can get this for free, because people, the bloggers sometimes need content and they will not charge you to, to publish, well, in some cases they do, but it depends on the website. And you can use the same kind of post and just change a little bit and distribute this for different blogs. Uh, again, 
soft and personal email marketing to your LinkedIn contacts. So if you have a product, you are launching the product, if you, you want to get leads maybe, the easiest way is to send to the people that you know, your network, your, your, uh, the people from your company's network, and try to get some people uh, that you know and send an email saying, look, oh, I, I created this service, would you be interested to know more? And try to get these guys to your website or to explore and try to then generate and qualify this data. And finally, uh, lookalike audience in Facebook or Twitter. This means that you need to have uh, already a customer base. But if you do, you can expand and try to create lookalike uh, audiences. Uh, this can be done in Facebook, in Twitter, also in Gmail in a slightly different way. But uh, this is something you might want to explore if you have thousand clients or at least uh, some hundred clients. Well, tools, I will talk very quickly because there's no more time. So, uh, analytics, mix panel, uh, Outjar, analytics, mix panel, I think this doesn't need introduction, but uh, Outjar, which allows you to understand what the user is doing. Eventually, if you are in a landing page, you want to understand what the user is doing, especially if the landing page is not very short. And if it's a bit longer, you want to understand. I will talk about that. Okay. Yeah, I'll uh, Great. Then we have tools for uh, research and to try to understand what your competitors are doing, like similar web built with similar tech and data nice. I think these are really very good tools for research and even for you to understand which market you want to open a new geography. Uh, using these tools is very important to try to realize what could be a good geography for you based on your competition. Um, then for retargeting, using AdRoll that can uh, do the retargeting in many platforms like uh, retargeting in Facebook, retargeting in AdWords. Uh, it's one platform, you can do it just for AdWords, in AdWords platform. Then you have uh, another way to generate leads which is to uh, have push notifications with this person. You can use the market leader which is one signal. We have our own tool which is push news, but more or less the same. Ours is more easy to use, let's say. This one is more uh, more for technical people. Then lead works, I'm gonna show you just next uh, slide. Enter.io, which is was previously called email enter, which this is a tool where you put the website and they will try to find emails related with this company. Uh, and then for creating landing pages, you have a lot of different solutions that put you at free, which is Unbounce, Landing Lead, landing lead and Lead Farming. Uh, but you can use uh, WordPress or whatever to create, or you can create in, in, a, in, a, in a platform that you already use. This is not an issue. And Optimize, which you can use to optimize and do A-B testing and uh, change things and in, in real time do some tests. Just curiosity, Leadworks. Uh, this is a tool that you install in our website. And they, anyone knows this tool? You know? Uh, so, for example, in the Impacting Group website, uh, we know that the guys from novojournal.jor.br have been looking to our website. We know that uh, europea.pt was looking for our website. And then if you click in any of these, it will give information like the phone number, which is not something difficult to find, but then you can also find email addresses related with, with this uh, company. It's an interesting tool. So, just like one or two slides, sorry. Uh, capture the leads. So, first, you have a landing page. I'm, I'm not going to into the details because I think I talked about this yesterday, but you can do it for with a landing page, which is something like this. You can do it with, for example, with uh, uh, push notifications, asking the user to accept for you to communicate in later, and you can do it on uh, chatbot. Okay, this is a chatbot for, uh, in this case, this is not exactly for lead, well, it is for lead generation, sorry. So, if you go on the website, the company, you show up with uh, something catching his attention, and start a conversation. And if you start a conversation and you make two or three questions, for example, uh, your company is small or big? And the guy says it's small, for instance, uh, you can understand that 
this is a customer that it's good for you. So we're gonna ask another kind of question, try to qualify at some point. If you see if this is really the right client that I want, you give him a huge offer or whatever, free consultancy, and pass this directly to the to the sales team and ask for the phone number because then the guy needs to call. Okay, you generate the lead. Mm -hmm. This is uh, well, I hope the future because we are working a lot on this. So, just small tips for landing pages. I don't know if we talked about this yesterday, but anyway. Uh, you need to create the offer, we talked about this previously. You need to uh, make sure, this is very important, make sure that you, if you make an advertising and then you put the user in a landing page, make sure that this is really well connected. The message that you are putting in the ad matches the message that you are putting in the landing page. Otherwise, the user will feel confused and the, the, the conversion is going to drop. Ask for low commitment, meaning don't ask a huge number of fields. Ask the fields that you feel comfortable asking, but the minimum as possible. Because this is time commitment and also information commitment. And of course, uh, don't ask for money at the, at the first stage. If you ask for money, you are asking for commitment. Of course, if you have two buttons, one is one more, the other is by now with the Visa card and etc. You're gonna click in, not more in the, in, in the first one, except for some cases. Uh, and it must be clear for why you need information. Uh, just about the chatbots, uh, just to close. So, uh, chatbots, it's something that is interesting because it's uh, available 24-7, it looks like some uh, like, like a person talking to you. It's mobile native because people are used to chat in mobile. And it's a smart way to make a contact form or a, to transform a form because you don't need to ask 10 fields, you can ask one by one and, the, and at some point you already have information that you need, but then you can ask some more information to qualify more the lead, which is quite interesting. Uh, you can drive the conversation, okay? You, you can put questions to the person and not the other way around, not putting the, the user asking you questions. So you can drive conversation, it's interesting for you. Uh, um, you can get feedback and, you, and possibly you can redirect to a live chat whenever you don't know what to do with this client or you don't understand what he really needs. So, some statistics. I think I'm very late, so maybe I'll pass the statistics. Just one, one important number: 80% of all sales leads are never followed up. And this is, this is a little leaky bucket. It comes from here many times because you are generating leads, spending a lot of money, but then in the end, nobody's following following up. Um, and 44% of salespeople give up after one follow up. This is also a problem, big problem. Uh, and because 80% of sales require five follow ups. So we are losing all our clients because they are not following up enough. Um, response time. This is also very important. Maybe it's going to be taught like, later on, but it's very important when you generate a lead right after. You must take action. You, you can't wait a long time. If you follow up web leads within five minutes, you are nine times more likely to convert. I'm not sure if this is the right number, but there is a huge increase when you uh, wait some time, especially in B2C, this is, I already saw these numbers in B2C and they are huge, so do it fast. Well, final message, I'm finishing now. <laughs> so uh, I think consistency is key here, again. So, uh, if you can uh, create the, the right inbound strategy or ads, well connected with the offer, very aligned with the buyer persona, and you understand where this is going to put the lead in terms of the sales funnel, I think you have the right way to address and to, to, to make lead generation the right way. Okay. And the last one is to say, okay, if you are advertising, this is really long. <laughs> uh, if you are advertising or are creating content for inbound marketing, okay, 
you are sending the user for a landing page, make sure that you create a link, not, not a, a hyperlink, that you create a real link to make the user uh, feel like he's uh, starting having a conversation with you. It must make, must make <coughs> sense. If you, add, you, put, if you put a banner with a message, if the user clicks, it must be a conversation. It must be something that is a story you are telling to the user, and it must be very well connected, very well linked. And then the same between your landing page or your form or your chat bot to the next step. When you confirm that you receive this information, you must explain what is going to happen next for him to be expecting this. This can be sending him a message saying you are going to receive an SMS to confirm whatever. And then you receive the SMS and the SMS says the guy will call you in the next 24 hours, for example. And finally, uh, when you do this, you must also create the link to the sales follow-up, meaning that uh, the lead when it passes from marketing to sales, that must be the whole story, because nobody likes to repeat its name to the telecom when you are talking to them, and then they change from one guy to the other, and the guy to the other, and the guy to the other, right? This is the same for the lead generation process and the, the funnel. Uh, it's the same. Use uh, the same language, use the same identity. It's a conversation. It's not just throwing things. Okay. Thanks a lot. Woo!